from GCN New Yorker. Welcome to GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week, for the first time ever, we have a live studio audience. <laughs> Actually sounded quite good. I mean, we've got a live audience now. Uh, we'll wait and see how many are left at the end of Extreme Corner. That, that is a very good point, Dan. Anyway, this week is very much business as usual. We're going to be discussing the new big money sponsor of Team Sky. Does its budget actually have implications for the future of professional cycling? Do we need a budget cap? We're also going to be talking about the orig origin, should I say, of gravel riding and a saddle that could potentially literally blow smoke up your ass. Yes, and we have Wattage Bazooka. This time, it is a Sufferfest presenter competition. This week in the world of cycling, we learnt that the riders that are going to be doing the 2020 Tour de France are going to have a rather rude awakening on stage one. Absolutely. Take a look at this profile. Uphill, straight from the gun. Now that looks tough, but it's nothing compared to stage two, which has actually got proper mountains in as well. We also learned this week that Julian Alaphilippe is not only an amazing climber, a brilliant sprinter, but he's also quite the mover and shaker. He might also be the Milan San Remo winner, but we're not sure because we're recording this before the event. Yeah, now given that we did not predict him to win Milan San Remo, there is a pretty good chance that he's actually going to take that victory on the Via Roma, isn't it? Uh, now, we also learned this week that Dan is not a zero. Oh no, we all witnessed his final Sufferfest 4DP test last night, and wasn't it good? Round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm liking this. There we go, yeah. Now, I've, I've got to say, uh, unfortunately, uh, you didn't quite nail 300 watts for your FTP, did you? Uh, but more than respectable, 286, which is not far off a 20% improvement, and all the other metrics went up as well. So, uh, so yeah, fair play, mate. That was awesome. Yeah, I'm effectively neither zero nor hero. No, that's no surprise, is it, really, mate? No, anyway, no, no, no. anyway, that's a little bit me. Uh, right, the big news this week, apart from Dan's fitness test, was, of course, that the rumours about Team Sky have now been confirmed. Is Geraint, he's doing the Giro now? No, that one has still not been confirmed, or rather it's consistently denied, but I'm refusing to let it go. <laughs> but no, this one is the fact that the new sponsor is gonna be Ineos. So they will become Team Ineos as of May, in fact, but it does present a potential problem, doesn't it? It does. I mean, it's undeniably good short-term news. Well, yeah, this, that's isn't true. It? The fact that a new sponsor has come in to replace the biggest bu budget sponsor in cycling. Uh, and I think it also means that the current people that are backing different teams and Team Sky are probably going to be quite pleased about this. But I think we firstly need to answer the question or pose the question about the team budget. Well, yeah, let's face it. So Team Sky have won six out of the last seven Tours de France, mm. haven't they? Effectively, they have been able to crush the life out of the race, haven't they? Yes, and they've also won four out of the last five Grand Tours, so they've been crushing Grand Tours in general. Uh, but out of interest, we would like to firstly get the audience's opinion on this. Do you, th how should I put this? Do you think that Team Sky have made the Tour de France Less exciting. Boring, Dan, is what you mean. Yes. So if you could hold up green for boring, uh, sorry, red for boring, actually, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Red for boring, green for hack. Uh, obviously, your card does say hack or bodge. We could only afford to give you one, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. But uh, anyway, there we, we go. We've blown the budget on these, to be fair. Right, so, ooh, ooh. It's fairly interesting. I'd say it's reasonably, it's slightly more boring than interesting, but almost a 50-50 split, actually. Yes. I'd say slightly more boring than interesting, but yeah, I think you're right, Dan, a 50-50 split. 
Now, of course, the theory is that by having a bigger budget, you can, of course, afford to buy better riders, and then you'd also be able to afford to spend more money behind the scenes, making your amazing roster of talent even better. Yes, so to the extent that other teams and other riders barely get a look in, do they, at the Grand Tours exactly. these days? So what is the answer to this? Budget cap? Budget cap. Could be a budget cap, like a level playing field from a financial point of view between all the different teams in the World Tour. So that calculated investment is basically the order of the day. Well, okay, so what would the advantages of a potential budget cap be? Well, firstly, you would hope for more interesting racing, wouldn't you? Because the talent would be spread more evenly across all the World Tour teams. Well, that's right, and more unpredictable racing, or should we say more unpredictable sport in general, is better to watch and therefore you would also expect to see people more interested in racing, the viewing figures going up. Yes, and even away from races, what would be really interesting is to see how each different team would allocate their capped budget. So what would they spend it on? For example, would you get the best coach in the world or would you pay to see all your riders go to the wind town to become more aero? Yeah, would you invest your money in a team chef or make all the riders put up with French pasta, which is also sometimes known as soup. Yes, or would you get two brand new team buses, all the vehicles that you wanted, the best coach in the world, or would you get pizzas again? Well, yeah, it's a dilemma that one team is gonna have to face, isn't it? Now, you would also expect cycling, therefore, to provide a better return on investment for sponsors, because basically it's gonna cost them less, and as we've already seen, potentially more people are gonna watch it. And if there are too many sponsors as a result of that budget cut, what you could end up having is leagues where you get promotions and demotions, just like you would do in something like the Premier League. So you know what would happen if the UCI imposed the budget cap there, don't you? I've got no idea what would happen, Simon. Have you not? Okay, well, so basically, the World Tour would get the rule and they'd forget to implement it for Pro Continental, meaning that you'd get teams like Team Ineos registering as Pro Continental and having the same budget as normal, wouldn't they? Yes. That is exactly what exactly Team what Sky or Ineos would do, isn't it? Yeah. I think we also need to think about what the downsides of this could be. And to start with, we have realised and found out that it might not even be legal in the first place. So no. there's an absolutely brilliant article on this uh, by Stephanie Constan, who basically said it's a minefield when it comes to the laws on this sort of thing. So it might not even be plausible in the first place. No, and were it to be implemented, can you imagine policing it? Like forensic accountancy. Yeah. It'd, be an, it'd be an absolute nightmare. So. Uh, Ideally, given what we've seen from our audience of what they would like to see, it might be a good idea, but may not be plausible to start with. No, but there is precedent, isn't there? NFL uh, have got budget caps, and then also Formula One are trying to implement it by 2020 or 2021, I think. The other problem they've got is, just like Formula One, it's not going to be popular with the teams. Chris Froome, when asked about it eh, back last year, he actually said it amounted to communism, which uh, I'm not entirely sure I agree with that, but still. And Alberto Constable was also asked about whether there should be a budget cap in cycling, and his response was yes, there definitely should be. Uh, and that question was posed to him about two months after he retired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right then. OK, so given we've got well, in our opinion, quite a few pros, and then also some inevitable cons. Could we ask for your opinion on this subject? So our audience here, for a start, get to vote first. So if you could hold up red for budget cap and green for spend everything you want. So what do we think? It's red or green? Oh, have you got two cars? Oh, double voting, right. Green. Green, spend what you like. I think, isn't it? Yeah. It's close, but it's definitely spend what you like. Okay, and what about you at home as well? So you, of course, get to vote. If you click on screen now, there is a poll, and we will come back to this next week. And of course, let us know in the comments section as well exactly what you think about it. Next up, we have our weekly GCN Inspiration segment, which is, of course, your chance to win one of three Wiggle voucher amounts. All you need to do is submit your photos, either using the uploader, a link to which you can find in the description below, or using the hashtag GCN Inspiration over on Instagram. Uh, we've picked our favourite three this week. Oh, yes. So, in no... Well, I was going to say in no particular order, but there in, is a in definite order. order, Dan. It's called third, second and first. Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> so... Third place this week is this absolute belter from Peter. Check that out. Yes. Now, we, we did always say, didn't we, that when GCN Inspiration was launched, that you didn't have to have an amazing view 
but often we seem to pick one yes, with amazing so we, we, views. We yeah. realised that what we said at the start we didn't actually stick to, so we've deliberately picked one with graffiti but in no, the background. But no, this is cool, because that's a great bit of graffiti, it's a lovely bike, and actually that is kind of inspiring, isn't it? Because riding your bike doesn't have to be in amazing places. Like, most of my riding is done in between cities. So that's that sums it up to me, mate. I'm all over that. Yeah, I think that's a great photo. Yeah, I do too. Right, uh, Well win. done. 50 pounds of wiggle vouchers on their way to you. Uh, 75 pounds this week goes to Ben. I'm not going to try to pronounce the surname, but he has taken this photo. Uh, oh, look at that. Calder Browse. That one is a pearl. If, if anyone's ever ridden the Calder Browse, they'll know that section of switchbacks. Utterly amazing. I've never ridden it. That, really? Yeah, that is a great photo, yeah. And then, drum roll, please. They haven't got drums, but they've got laps. Yes. The winner of £100 of Wiggle Vouchers this week is Bella. With this photo. Like, wow, look at that. Yes. Yeah. As you're quickly learning, we are suckers for sunrise and sunset photos, and that is a brilliant example. That is, yes. Yeah, sunrise magic on this morning's ride, Western Creek. Australian Capital Territory. That is an absolute pearler, a deserved winner of the big prize, £100 of Wiggle Vouchers. As Dan said, do remember, if you want to submit a photo to GCN Inspiration, then you either use the hashtag GCN Inspiration or you use the uploader. It's now time for cycling shorts. We are going to start cycling shorts with news that has come out of Boulder. So the Pro's Closet, which started out life as an eBay store, which was selling Pro's second-hand clothing, has now become a sort of legitimate company with an online shop that sells second-hand equipment. Yeah, now what's interesting at the moment is that actually they've just launched a programme for certifying used bikes and then guaranteeing like a buyback scheme for 18 months after your purchase. As you know, we're big fans of second-hand bikes here on GCN. I mean, John's Cheap Bike to Superbike series has been absolutely brilliant. And it shows just what you can do with pretty amazing value, as well as the environmental sustainability element as well. Yeah. I, well, I still can't believe that John Cummings didn't keep the original paint job which I suggested. The other lads, they really stitched me up. That was a good paint job, Dan. That he was went a good to Celeste, job. which he apparently hates. <laughs> yeah. But less so than one that I suggested. Anyway, we're going to go from US to UK news because, believe it or not, amongst all of the Brexit chaos... Now, we're assuming that the Brexit chaos is going to continue, aren't we? Given that we're filming this a little bit in advance of when it's released, but that's a fair shout, isn't it? Well, I think we can be guaranteed that there's going to be still more Brexit news in the... Yeah, not even the curse of GCN would work on Brexit, I no. don't think, would it? Anyway, we are going to get on some news from Carlton Reid, who is a writer for Forbes. Uh, so he has said that apparently electric scooters might no longer be banned in the UK, which is fair enough, you'd think, except for the fact that uh, they've actually been banned for 200 years. That's incredible, isn't it? Like visionary banning. Imagine thinking to ban something 180 years before it was even invented. Yeah. Unbelievable, really. But what is really interesting is that the same law was passed in the UK in 1835, had to be amended at the point that road bicycles were invented. Yeah, to even allow us to ride on the road. So effectively, an e-scooter now is what a road bike was, what, 150 years ago. Uh, anyway, what's undeniably cracking news is that in the report which that little snippet comes from, which is called, and I believe, the Future of Mobility Urban Strategy, Cycling's a fundamental part of that, so hopefully that means good things for bike riders in the UK. Yeah, and if anybody would like to discuss this further, we will happily do so at the bar quite a long time later. Won't yes, we? yeah, after a good few drinks. Now, uh, before we leave this subject completely, we've got to say the Royal Mail, which is the British Postal Service, get a big thumbs up from us this week because they're currently trialling replacing their cars and their vans with e-trikes, which are close enough to bikes that we'll, we'll actually give them a shout-out well, for that. Well, this has got to be a good thing. It's got to be a good thing. It? I thought this was a great tweet. So they basically said over on Twitter, uh, look out for them delivering uh, Royal Mail in Stratford, Cambridge and Sutton Coalfield later this month. Yeah, brilliant. There we go. So if you live in one of those uh, towns or cities, then there you go. You, you might have an e-trike. Yes. Around. Yeah. Keep a look out. Send us a photo if you see them. Yeah. Uh, right. We're going to get onto a rumor transfer mill now. So apparently. Wait a minute. What rumor transfer rumor mill in March? Yes. Serious? I know it's early. It doesn't normally happen until about May time, does it? No, it but doesn't. We've got one this year. So apparently, Vincenzo Nibali is going to Trek Sega Fredo. 
And the reason that we know this is because his team manager at Barre Merida, where he is now, has said to Cycling News that he was apparently already going for meetings with Trek Sega Frodo over at Terreno Adriatico. Well, yeah, and he turned down Barmer in Merida's extension in 2018, didn't he? So there we go. Uh, right, one last uh, piece of news from Cycling Shorts. I've got to give a uh, massive shout out to Anna van der Breggen. Basically, she uh, is the dominant force in women's cycling at the minute, but she's actually turned her hand to mountain biking again this year. She's partnered up with the uh, former cross country mountain bike world world champion Annika Langvad and the pair of them are totally dominating the race. I think they've won every stage so far by the time we film this and they're currently leading by 26 minutes. So that is some we, we love a bit of a multi-talented cyclist, so we on road and off, and Anna van der Breggen is absolutely crushing it. I mean it would be a wattage bazooka, but we've got a different one coming up for you. Oh we do. Right, we have been indulging in one of our absolute favourite pastimes, which is trawling Kickstarter for this week's Tech of the Week. And we've got some pretty incredible ones, haven't we, Dan? We have indeed. So to start with, we have a temperature-controlled saddle. You're not going to believe this. It's unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the proof's in the pudding, really, with that phrase, isn't it? Anyway, what it does is it has air vents, and it will blow respectively cold or hot air up your posterior. Which is amazing, isn't Who it? Who wouldn't want one of those? <laughs> yes, exactly. That is absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, there is still some way for them to go before they meet their funding target. The inventor was after 142,000 euros. So far, they've only got nine. <laughs> 9,000 is not bad though, is it? No, not 9,000, literally 9 euros. They've got so, <laughs> yeah. 9 euros. Well, I mean, if they add the smoke element and they can blow smoke up your ass, then it might go somewhere. That is in a fact, good point, Dan. We might also get some investors here in the room tonight now <laughs> yeah. that they've seen this amazing invention. Uh, but remarkably, this next one actually has hit some of its targets. Uh, it's a tyre width changeable tread that can be zipped on and off. So no more changing tyres, you can literally zip them on and off. I don't really think that's my cup of tea. I mean, anyone who's tried to undo a zip uh, that's covered in mud will know that you don't get very far, do you, really? No. Yeah, zips can fail all the time, can't they? Exactly, indeed. Right then, I also finally happened to see this on Kickstarter, and I thought I've got to show you, because it actually, it's a very, very important moment in the history of cycling, okay? There is something called the Rough Stuff Fellowship Archives, which is a book that's currently out for funding. Now, the Rough Stuff Fellowship actually invented the mountain bike, they just didn't know it, and therefore they didn't make any money out of it. And they also invented the gravel bike 60 years before it became known as the gravel bike. Yes, or the Grode bike, as Katie Fretz coined it. Uh, so this originated in the UK back in the 50s. So they took bikes where bikes had never been before, basically, taking your average road bike and modifying it so that it survived over all sorts of terrain. Yeah, absolutely bonkers. Bike and riders survived. Now, some might say that actually the gravel bike spirit comes directly from these men and women. And the brilliant thing is this club is still going in the UK. They actually have a website complete with a poem, which Dan, if I may, actually read out. First poem ever on the GCN show. <clears throat> Let's have a beer. I am a rough stuff touring bike, my owner's pride and joy. I've mud guards and a saddlebag. I'm clearly not a toy. I wouldn't say I'm shiny. That's enough. That's the end of Tech of the Week for That's this week. That's the end of Tech of the Week for this week. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you finish Tech of the Week, guys, I've just teleported straight from Mallorca to the Taipei Bike Show to bring you all the latest and best tech from this massive bike show. It's so big, it's even bigger than Lloydie's Mallorca hangover. So brace yourselves, tech is coming. Right, I think now it is time to- The Wattage Bazooka! <laughs> So the premise of the What is Bazooka this week is very simple indeed. We are going to find out who is the most powerful GCN presenter over the course of 30 seconds. And, well, we, we knew we wouldn't be amongst the best, didn't we? So we're not doing it, but we've got three of what we think are the best doing it now. That's right, so the guys at the Softfest have very kindly rigged up our bespoke 30 second test. So Chris is currently just warming up before he's going to lay down a what to do. Where's our sign, mate? We brought it all the way from England. Come on, I need to go and get the sign. We do. Just, I need the sign before you do it, mate. 
Uh, whilst Ty gets the sign, we will watch Chris gradually warm up. So the order is Chris, Chris then Hank, Scott. with James Losey Williams, and then yeah. finally Sebastian Lucas Haido, who's my bet actually. No offence, Chris. Uh, but we will see what they do. We've had some uh, respective predictions from the audience, ranging from 700 to 1,025, I think it was. So we will see who's closest. And also, who's the best eating presenter over 30 seconds? Five, four, four three, two, one, go! Well, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, no, mate, that was a cracking effort. Dan, have we got the scores? The results are in, and they are quite astounding. Uh, Chris averaged for 30 seconds 990 watts. <laughs> Fair play. I mean, we can do that, can't we, Side, for two seconds? <laughs> <laughs> right, next up, we have our new Spanish recruit, Lucas Sebastian Haido, who's only actually recently retired, so he should be fitter. Come on. Come on, Sebastian. Round of applause, Sebastian. Come on. Okay. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go! 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 Sebastian, that was an absolutely cracking effort, mate. Lordy, have we got the results? We have. It's all the sevens. Seven, 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 what? Oh, so seven, seven, seven. Well done, mate. Well done. Oh, just, just shy. But it's extremely respectable. Si and I can do that for 10 seconds. Yeah. Can't we? <laughs> but <laughs> power to weight wise, uh, Sebastian claims that he weighs 68 kilograms at the moment. Chris said he's 65. That's not true. <laughs> he's probably closer to. 77, although sprinting's more about aerodynamics than, uh, than, than weight, isn't it? I feel so. sprint, mate. Anyway, there we go. Right, we've got one more challenger. He's elected to do it wearing chinos, as only Hank could. <laughs> he has replaced his boat shoes with, uh, with clipless pedals. Uh, but anyway, come on, Hank. Oh, you, oh, we need to swap bikes, Can I don't swap we? Bike? Yeah. He's elected to bring his own bike as well. Right. right. Are you ready? Chris, what gear do you go for? Uh, 14, 15. Yeah, I'm not going to go for that one. What front size? <laughs> uh, we've got Hank up next in some chinos and some casual clothing. Can he beat Chris Opie? It's a, it's a tall order. It is a tall order. Uh, he's also not wearing socks. Uh, Tom, if you can just pan down and show. Yeah. We don't know where they've, we don't know where they've gone. Uh, well, I can only assume he's about to go for a run after this. Uh, right. OK. James, are you ready, mate? No. Five, four, three. Two, one, one go! go. I tell you what, Dan, irrespective of the outcome, I think that's probably the most wattage anyone's ever put out wearing chinos. So well done, James. <laughs> Round of applause for that, mate. <laughs> the results are in. So we already know that Chris almost got to 1,000 watts for 30 seconds. We know wow. that Lucas Sebastian Haido did 777 watts for 30 seconds. And we now have the results of Hank. Uh, and we might be able to add on 50 watts because you were using chinos. <laughs> but nevertheless, he did 758. 58 watts for 30 Spectre. seconds, which puts you in third place, which means our wattage bazooka. Wattage bazooka! Oh, yeah. Go to Chris. Yeah. Round of applause for all three. 
Next up, one of our favourite points of each and every week, it is Hack. Forward slash bodge of the week. And this week, we're not going to be deciding whether they're hacks or bodges oh, because no. we have a live studio audience to do it for us. Anyway, first up, we have this one from Jesse Winnikoff. Seen in San Antonio last week, full disc wheel made of duct tape. No, that's amazing. Oh, yes, look at that. Come on, what is it then? A bodge! What? Oh, come on. Surely that's going to be the most aero fixie you've ever seen. Right, well, anyway. There I we... think that would work. No, I, I think, think I'm going to disagree yeah. with our audience. No, and we, say can't. That we can't overrule, mate. All oh, right, sorry. It's a bodge. Yeah, it's they, a bodge. They, sorry they about might that. not um, come to the next decent event if we disagree, will they? <laughs> that's okay. one they could just walk out right now. Right, come on then. <laughs> next up, we've got. Half them have, sorry. Look, okay. Um, <laughs> Zach Smith says, my buddy's cantilever brake to V brake conversion. Right, what do we think? Oh, my word! That is terrifying. There we go. Unanimous bo Oh, There's one broke hack over there. Come <laughs> on, put it down. That's a bodge, isn't it? An absolute terrifying bodge. Uh, right, we've got this one sent in by Nate Cobbs. Uh, ooh, now that's pretty tasty. Any home mechanics out here will know that is a homemade truing stand. Uh, is that with, like, earplugs at the bottom? Innovative. I'd say. We should probably look at this before we actually do it live, shouldn't we? But maybe they are earplugs, yes. But I would say that is a hack, personally. But as you said, it's not down to us this week. We get... Oh, oh, it's a unanimous, unanimous hack. Unanimous hack. <laughs> there, oh, there, one rogue bodge. Come on. <laughs> All right, next up, we have this from Mika Art. Uh, lost the silicon on the bottle cage. Uh, found the road... Found on the road a tin can opener where I stopped. Well, there we go. So, now, presumably the water bottle's not going to bounce out. That could be a kind of useful fix, or at least stopping your bottle bouncing out your pocket. Well, we're undecided. What does the audience think? Well, there's Whoa. one that's hack and budge. Okay. Yeah, I'd say that's 50 50, 50 isn't it? I would say 50 50. It's kind of like, you know, eh, isn't it really? At least they picked up some rubbish. That's the other thing. So <laughs> yes. that's, and for environmental reasons, it's probably a hack. But for all other reasons, it's just a bodge. Right, next up, we got this from, from Henning Schulz. Whoa, look at that. How can that be described as anything other than a hack? Someone's put some serious time into that, haven't they? And probably money. Uh, we should probably ask the question as well. Would anyone ride that here before you vote? No, no. No, no riding. OK, right. But is it a hack or is it a bodge? Oh, bodge? Would you say bodge? I'd say that'd be mean if that's a bodge. That looks pretty cool. Should yeah. we say hack? It was a 50-50 split. We're going to cast a deciding vote. That is another hack. Yes, OK. So we have kind of an equal split of hacks and bodges. We have a sound effect then as well. Uh, right, next up and finally actually for hack or bodge this week, we have this from Joe Crooks USA. Uh, sunglasses with DIY vents. No, he's drilled his Oakleys, Dan. <laughs> Oh, oh, we've got, we've got some approval. <laughs> well, that's, that's almost been deemed a hack. Well, rather, rather them than me uh, drilling into my, my expensive sunglasses. But there we go. I mean... There's no way I'd do that to my brokers. Yeah, oh, it's been deemed a hack. I think that sound effect was a hack. Yeah, it was. This has been completely out of control this week, hasn't it? It has indeed, yeah. And it's been quite good. It's been quite good. Mm. Right, it... anyway, if you would like to submit a photo to Hack or Bodge for next week, of course, you use the hashtag GCNHack on social media or the uploader, which you should know by now, the link to which is in the description beneath this video. It's time now for caption competition, which is your opportunity to get your hands on a GCN water bottle. All you've got to do is write a witty caption to a photo that we give you. Now, to give you a bit of a hint, we're going to give you the results from last week. So this is the photo that we gave you. And the winner is Trevor Norman with the caption, could you give me a wee push? Genius. Well done, Trevor. Fantastic work. <laughs> I see what you did there, Trevor. Yeah. Uh, this bottle will be winging its way to you just as soon as you send us your address over on Facebook. Right, the photo that you can get your teeth stuck into this week is coming up for you now. It is <laughs> this one of Sam Oman, uh, the best young rider at Torino Adrasco that finished just over, well, just less than a week ago, in fact. Uh, I am going to get you started. Go on, mate. Are you ready for this? Yep. Okay. Yep. That looks like a bad omen. Ooh. 
That's what happens when you read out a caption in front of a live studio audience, mate. Oh dear. Oh dear. If you think you could do better, and we suggest you can, then uh, I would definitely get your caption in the comment section underneath this video. And I'll take that away from you, Dan. <laughs> Next up, we're going to go through three of our favourite comments from the past seven days before we tell you what's coming up on the channel for the next seven days. Yeah, so this first comment, actually, I'm very glad that they, uh, that they sent it in, Dan. So this is from Peter Kloskowski. Uh, <laughs> Peter? Uh, or Petter? Anyway, never mind. The, the point is that uh, they finished second in the Weekly Inspiration last week, and we talked about whether or not it was slippy ice or grippy ice. Anyway, they put us out of our misery. Uh, the ice definitely wasn't grippy. In fact, it was slippery as hell and very different from the one that you found in Sweden, Simon. Uh, although it sounds like he's familiar with that kind of grippy ice, Dan. He said it took several tries to capture the pick, and each time I had to just roll down in a straight line, trying not to lean to either side or touch my brakes prematurely. Uh, so there we go. Uh, that was how he finished second in the weekly inspiration. So, I uh, still can't get my head around grippy ice. Mate, you've got to go to Sweden in January and, uh, and you'll find it, I'm sure. All right. Also underneath the show last week, we had this uh, comment coming in from Lisa Rogers. Uh, as I think the Sabunt sprint finishes with 19.73 riders as the average for Milan San Romo, I'm wondering what the 0.73 would be. Would that rider have the same height as Emma or shortened? Well, yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. The, perhaps the comment that replied from uh, Roichi R, the 0.73 <coughs> might actually be more like Dan, not really there in terms of either power or fitness. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Although, we know that's not fair now. You're at least 0.83, so, uh, so there we go. Uh, but, no, to big you up, Dan, that's, that isn't fair. Uh, Kimbo72 also commented, under the same show, do we have to keep seeing Dan flaunting his huge pecs each week? Now, I'm not entirely sure what they were watching, but uh, anyway, there we go. Huge pecs, mate, well done. Well, if Cracking I did have it. huge pecs, I would flaunt them. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, coming up on the GCN show this week, uh, sort of the forthcoming week then, we have got on Wednesday, how to ride the rollers. Then coming up on Thursday, we have top five fastest bikes. I could do one of those. So yeah, I yeah, admit. Yeah. And then on Friday, as ever, it's Ask GC Anything. Yeah, then Saturday, uh, quite, uh, quite close to our hearts right now, given we're in Mallorca, it's Ollie's Sacalobra Challenge. So he set himself the goal of going sub 30 minutes on that savage climb. Uh, everyone in the audience will know that because we've all got it in our legs literally from today. So find out how Ollie got on on Saturday. I don't want to give anything away, but you went flat out today and you didn't break 30 minutes, did you? No, I didn't break the image. Thanks for that, Dan. Yeah, no uh, right, anyway, uh, then on Sunday, it is the finale. Can you turn a cheap bike into a super bike? We give you the answer in a full feature over on GCN. And then Monday, racing new show. Racing new show. And then Tuesday, we're going to be actually back in the set without a live audience, unfortunately, because they've been fantastic tonight. Uh, but for the GCN show. Well, we are getting towards the end of the GCN show now, unfortunately, but there is, of course, still time for Extreme Corner. And this week, it is utterly mind-blowingly extreme because it's highlights from Darkfest, which has just taken place in South Africa. Well, there we go. That was Extreme Corner, ladies and gentlemen, and that was the GCN show. So thank you very much for sitting through it and being such amazing sports uh, and, and taking part as well. So please, a round of applause for you guys. Uh, amazingly, we've, we've got all the way through to Extreme Corner and we still have a few people left in the building. Yeah, let's so not tell the people at home that actually we filmed the exit of the show at exactly the same time we filmed the intro to the show, shall we? That's how we managed to get around <laughs> yeah. it. Right, anyway, uh, thank you to you at home for watching as well. Uh, if you would, uh, come on Hank, come on in mate. <laughs> come on in. Right, for those of you watching the video at home, we have had sort of interval uh, entertainment from Hank over here. Come on Hank. Anyway, uh, if you would like to watch another GCM video right now, then why not check out Dan's Zero to Slightly Above Average or indeed Hank's Ride Race video as well. Thanks very much for watching. Here and here.